The Shadow by Marnie Javornik. Amanda shivered as she clutched the blanket around her shoulders tighter to her chest while she stared fixedly at the seam arising from the mug of tea on the table in front of her. Sitting in the police station in the interview rooms, a policewoman stood near the door on alert, but not unfriendly. When she had been brought to the station, the sights and sounds of so many people around her had been overwhelming. Amanda had felt like screaming and covering her ears in an effort to block out the surrounding babel of voices, the squeak of chairs and the clatter of footsteps. The many glances her way were excruciating. She'd had eyes on her constantly the entire time she'd been in the basement. There had been no escape from him and his eyes. The eyes around her now held pity, curiosity, but all she wanted was to escape them. The shuddering panic must have been broadcast from her body to those around her, and it was with relief that she found herself guided to the quiet room. Even though the presence of the other woman was somewhat comforting, Amanda wanted to be alone for as long as possible before the questions started, before she had to explain how someone who had been presumed dead for eight years was very much alive, before her father arrived to reclaim his lost daughter. She'd been taken when she was 10 years old on her way to her best friend's home for a slumber party. Her pink princess backpack on her back as she swung her arms, walking excitedly down her street and around the corner to Bethany's house. She and Bethany had been planning that night for weeks and it had taken much pleading with her dad to be allowed to go. In fact, her father had stood outside their house on the footpath, watching her until she turned the corner, waving excitedly back at him. It was only a few metres from the corner to the driveway of Bethany's home, but she never got there. She had felt a lurch backwards as someone had grabbed the handle of her backpack and she was hustled into the gaping maw of a dark white van. Strong arms encircled her and a rag was stuffed in her mouth. Her hands were bound with grey duct tape as she frantically kicked her legs before they too were encircled. Amanda would never forget the gagging feeling of the coarse cloth in her mouth, her eyes blurring with tears as helplessness engulfed her. Silently screaming for her dad, for someone to come, to right her world and erase this frightening new reality. What had happened was not real, could not be real. She didn't want to be this girl. She wanted to be the girl who had grown up with a loving single father, who went to school and then university, who dated boys and had crushes before falling in love. That girl would never exist. That girl had been swept away. She had been kept like a bird in a cage for eight years at the whim and mercy of a stranger and she would remain a prisoner for the rest of her life. Freedom, she pondered as the steam rose from the mug of tea, curled and evaporated, was relative. Her body was free and eventually perhaps her mind would be free, but she was irrevocably changed by what had happened to her. She would never be free. Her father would never be free. The lost years the lost family and friends. She would never have those back in the same way. There was a brief tap at the door before it opened and her father was there drawing her up and into his arms, his body racked with sobs. She stood stiffly, her arms at her sides, the blanket falling from her shoulders to the floor. Her eyes were wide with incomprehension as her father's hand grasped the back of her head and drew her face to his shoulder. She breathed in the scent of his skin and the smell of his clean shirt familiar yet elusive. She closed her eyes and allowed herself to be held, even as her mind recoiled from the contact. All she wanted was to fly, like a strong bird, to taste the freedom of flight, ride an updraft and soar to escape the burden of sorrow she had brought to those who loved her, like a dark shadow.